everybody, and welcome to this next installment of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where chicken's on sale for $1.99 a pound, Jesus fucking Christ, where we talk about things, and when I say we, I guess I just mean me, um... Unless you guys are sending me emails or leaving me comments that I'll read and then it's kind of a conversation. Who fucking cares, right? So, this is the part of the show right here in the beginning before I tell... You know what? No, no, no. We're going to talk a little bit about Bukowski and we're going to talk a little bit about rage, okay? So, here's what's going to happen right now. I need you, the, yes, you, the person listening to this. I'm talking to you individually right now. I need you to rate this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you are just listening to this on YouTube, make sure you give it a thumbs up and a share. Go ahead and leave a comment. That would be lovely. And if you're just listening to this and not looking at me right now, completely naked, sitting on a beach, drinking a pina fucking colada, you need to go over to um, the join feature on my YouTube page and... um, you can come in as low as two ninety nine to be able to see all of this, all of this that is there to see when I do these things, and then the other things I do that is just for members. Or you could be one of the big swinging dicks that joins the fucking Anarchy Crew and take the um, Poetic Anarchy course. Which, by the way, if you don't sign up by November 1st, the price is going up. So if you want to be grandfathered in on a sweet-ass deal, get your fucking ass over there quicker than a roadrunner being chased by a coyote. Am I right? Am I right, friends? Sweet. So now, we are going to do the fucking motherfucking shout out. And say a big thank you to all those big swinging dicks out there who are swinging for the fences, knocking balls over fucking fences. So, let's do this. So first, let's hit up the patrons. Michael, Deborah, Cedar, Harry, thank you so much for your support. You are fucking awesome. And for those of you who I just said your name, um, if you go over to Patreon, I already put up the PDF for Preview of a Dangerous Mind for you guys to download as your monthly digital chat book, if you are at least in the digital plus tier. Um, Oh, and let me say this. If I haven't said your name, that's because your card got declined. So um, if you still want to support me, I don't know what Patreon does when that fucking happens, but um, run over there and just make sure your credit card information is accurate. And even if... I did say your name. Why don't you just go make sure? Better safe than sorry, I always say. So now let's hit those motherfuckers over on the tubes. So here we go. I want to thank Bunny, Nate, Mindy, Thomas, Tim, Lisa, Josh, Patrick, and fucking Alan. Alan's in the fucking house, guys. Alan, poor fucking Al. He's in the goddamn fucking house. So thank you guys. Thank you for making things like this possible. Thank you for supporting me. And thank you for telling me through your financial contributions that the things I do fucking matter. That was lovely. I just put up. Oh, actually, I haven't even fucking put it up yet. I'll put it up tomorrow. Fuck it. Um the uh youtube feed the last episode's podcast is on the stream like or on the podcast feed and for up for the members but the um actual podcast a lot of people haven't heard yet on youtube so i'll get on that when i get on that but um one thing that i want to talk about briefly i don't know if i should start with this or end with this but i did a video called being like bukowski Because over the years of me doing poetry, people have compared me to Bukowski 
and I understand why. Um, but I've also met a lot of poets, mainly online, who talk about how badass Bukowski is and how they love Bukowski and they want to be just like Bukowski. And then they talk about drinking and they talk about um, like drunk nights and shit. I didn't go into this in the video. I'll link the video down below. Like I basically talk about why one shouldn't want to be like Bukowski. And if you look at his work and how long he wrote for what his life was really like, because I think people get this weird perception that it was like nonstop party and all this other shit. And it wasn't fucking at all. Okay, so back to, like, people wanting to be, like, Bukowski and, like, telling me about this and then just talking about drinking. Bukowski did not have a corner on the market when it comes to a drunk fucking poet. Um, every fucking poet, for the most part, who was ever worth a damn was drunk all the time, too. And it wasn't because the drinking made the poetry. It was that the poet was in such a fucking dark dark fucking place that the alcohol was the only thing that calmed him that soothed him you know what i'm saying i mean fuck if you read bukowski's work like they talk about dylan thomas you know like and they they joke about him all the time you know it's just fuck dude i mean we could go back to poe if we want to talk about a fucking drunk dude shit and he fucking started banging his fucking cousin when she was 14 are we gonna talk about that at all no, that's okay? All right, okay, all right. I, I'm getting pissed now. Now that I'm thinking about stuff, check this shit out. When people talk about Bukowski and talk about what a great poet he is and all this shit, and then you ask them what their favorite poem is, and like, oh, what's your favorite poem by Bukowski? Oh, man, just all of them, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, fucking really like post office and notes of a dirty old man. And we all know that that is not poetry. That was a novel, and that was a collection of articles. But a lot of people who want to be Bukowski or be like Bukowski really connect, I think, with Notes of a Dirty Old Man because in a lot of that stuff, he's talking about what it's like to be a poet. And he's talking about that life. And if you read, like, Tales of Ordinary Madness... You know, you'll get more of that. And so when you hear people talk about this, it's like, what is your favorite fucking poem, dude? Like, give me fucking Tragedy of the Leaves. Give me Genius of the Crowd. You know, give me Man at the Piano. Give me Death. You know, um, it's just like there's so many fucking poems to choose from. The fact that usually someone can't fucking give you one is fucking shocking shocking okay now i'm gonna fucking say something else that's really fucking interesting if you don't know this over the last year i've been doing and it's usually about every month i do a video about one of bukowski's old chapbooks so for those of you who don't know before i mean this was going on even past his black sparrow days but his first real book that was published was Flower Fist and Bestial Whale, which was a chapbook that Hearst Publications put out. Um, and there's been many others, like um, Long Shot Poems for Broke Players, um, the inserts to um, the Targets uh, magazine, just like there's a bunch of different ones and I've been going through them because I've been doing so many videos on Bukowski over the years. I've gotten a lot of response from people and the funniest fucking thing, the funniest thing that people fucking say when they talk about Bukowski is this. I either get, oh yeah, you know, um, I, I tried him out and wasn't really into it, you know. Um, and I'll give you some examples of things people have said recently later. But And I'm like, oh, like what, what books of his have you read? And they're like, oh, well, I have blank, 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 blank. And they start fucking going down this list of all these books they have. And it's like, 
if you have that many books of him, why the fuck did it take you so long to realize that you didn't like him? Like, what? Like, what the fuck happened? Then you get people who say, like, oh, he's a fucking misogynist. I fucking hate him. You know, like, um, his work is shit and blah, 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 blah. Oh, what have you read? Nothing. I haven't read a fucking thing. I heard from my friend that he's a piece of shit. Dude, if we want to fucking start going down the list of poets who are sexist or a misogynist, um, or if you want to start going even further down and say like a racist or even go further down and say a pedophile and all this other shit, there are many other fucking poets that are very fucking well respected that have all these things, but is the thing that you say you hate about Bukowski. So, um, I just want people to be fucking real. And if they're going to fucking hate Bukowski because of all this outside extra shit, then hate all the other poets that do the same fucking thing. Okay? Like, the reason why people don't like Bukowski right now is because it's fashionable. And because the fucking... Um, formalists out there, the fucking academic fucking goddamn pandemic has made it their fucking life's fucking goal to make sure nobody fucking reads his shit. Because it spits in their face, as it should. Okay? Now, I'm even going to go so far as to tell you a little story. And I'm going to try to hunt down someone who would know this information for me. But back in 2020, and I think it actually started a little bit before that, there was um, HarperCollins and Echo were going to put out a collection called Bukowski 100 that I think was 100 poems, 100 of Bukowski's best poems. And they were going to put it out and release it in August of 2020 for the 100th that would have been his 100th birthday, okay? The book was done. The book was made. The audiobook was done and made because I pre-ordered the audiobook, okay? Books from, like, 2019 and on of his books had these little stickers on them that had, like, Bukowski, like, a little Bukowski drawing, like, smoking a cigarette, and it said 100. They had these little stickers on the books to let everyone know that it was coming. They were doing a ton of shit. Okay? Then, inexplicably, with no fucking mention of it anywhere, it just disappeared. The cover of the book was out. You could see it everywhere. And then August came, and there was no book. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? September came. No book. <clears throat> I waited and waited and waited and then, like, in, um, I think, December it was, Audible fucking refunded me, like, the credit I used to pre-order the book. And so I fucking started writing Echo and HarperCollins, asking them what the fuck happened. And they're like, yeah, we decided to not put the book out. And I'm like, oh, well, are you going to put the book out? Um, probably not. We don't know. So, something happened. So, if we look at what was going on in the world at that time, I mean, yes, we still had, like, Me Too shit happening. But we also had, like, the BLM stuff. And we were, like, heading right up into fucking Trump v. Biden. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the fucking world was a crazy place. But I don't think Bukowski would have fucking made a goddamn lick of difference to anything. But the the idea that Bukowski is that venomous that you would need to pull all the shit that you already have done is fucking stupid. It's fucking kowtowing to fucking people who are bitching about stuff that they don't even fucking know about. It's like Twitter mob shit. I don't know, dude. I'm just like, it's so fucking stupid. 
and um, hang on, I'll, I'll be back. Sorry guys, I just had like the worst fucking beer shit ever. Fucking stink like shit. Which is probably exactly what it should stink like. Anyway, like I was saying, actually I don't remember what I was saying. So hopefully I will end up back on the same thing. But the thing that is so crazy about Bukowski is that there have been so many poets who have tried to mimic him. And so many poets who have tried to mimic his lifestyle who know almost nothing about his work. And then there's so many haters who have tried so hard to destroy anyone who's into that kind of shit and who also have read very little of him. Like, for someone who is prolific as Bukowski was... I honestly think that he is one of the few poets that has sold a shit ton of books that no one's fucking read. Like, honestly, it, it's like when you think about it, it's one of the most laughable fucking things in the world. And I'm not saying that whoever has bought a Bukowski book has not read it. I'm saying that probably people who are not trying to become poets probably read all of his shit who buy his shit people who um want to become poets have probably bought almost all of his stuff and read a bit of it here and there and the people who hate his stuff have never even given him a look it's just one of these funny fucking ridiculous things oh this is what i was going to get at and this is what brings me to my next point which is there are poets who, for some reason, are horribly fucking embarrassed to say that they're a fan of certain poets. And Bukowski is one of these poets. And I have had many fucking poets tell me that they love the fact that I talk about Bukowski a lot and do a lot of Bukowski shit because they love Bukowski, but they would never fucking say that publicly. And I'm like, why? Why? And they're like, uh, duh, what? like, no, like, I'm, I would never say that. I would never admit to that. The fact that there are so many fucking poets out there who are, first off, shitty lying motherfuckers is fucking just ridiculous. And then second, that are so afraid of their own fucking shadow or Twitter that they're going to fucking lie about who they are. This is fucking disgusting because out of all art forms, dude, out of all these art forms, poetry should be the most fucking honest and real and raw fucking art form. And there's so many fucking hypocritical fucking academic hipsters in the fucking poetry world that it just like, oh, my God, I'm getting fucking mad, dude. I am getting fucking angry again, man. God damn it. And here's the thing. Like, if you come to me and want to, like, say, oh, yeah, dude, like, I like Bukowski, you know, but I just don't want to tell anybody. I'm not going to fucking call you out. I'm not going to fucking, like, I'm going to tell you that you're being a fucking douchebag. But, like... You know, you're doing your own life and you're on your own journey, whatever. I'm not going to fucking publicly give you shit about that. I'm going to fucking tell you that you're a fucking douchebag and you should fucking like own up to the shit you like and not give a fuck about what people think. But that's just a friend talking to a friend, you know, a poet talking to a poet, a brother talking to a brother or sister. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing. Let me fucking say this. Oh, my God. This might blow your fucking mind. And I hope it does. Do you realize that the majority of people who fucking talk to me and write me and tell me how much they like Bukowski are fucking women? Did you fucking know that? I bet you didn't know that. Yeah, it's not like just a bunch of fucking misogynistic woman-hating knuckle-draggers that read Bukowski. There are tons of women who fucking read Bukowski and love Bukowski. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're one of the people who fucking love Bukowski, leave it in the comments. You know, just just do it. Let, let's see what happens. 
Not that I think anything bad's going to happen to you, but it's just curious to see who would who would fucking own up to that. People love all of these other fucking um, drunk, drug at, drug addict, fucking women beating, fucking petter ass, fucking poets, and that's totally fine, you know. Like woo, Nambla, you know what I'm saying? But like, oh shit, like Bukowski's a bad one. That's a that's a bad mamma jamma. Don't like him. Oh my god, so fucking stupid. Now there's probably some of you out there right now going, you know. It's not that I don't like Bukowski because of his life choices. I just don't like him because he's a bad poet. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, just know that he has sold more poetry than you ever will in your life and afterlife. And I hope that makes you sick to your stomach. Because again, art is judged subjectively and we're actually going to be talking more about that in the coming weeks i have some i have some nits to pick so um we will be we will be shooting the proverbial shit over that friends okay so this whole thing where people are ashamed of the people they like and poets are ashamed of the people that influence them. Why? Are you so fucking fragile that you think fucking letting people know who your influences are is, is going to hurt you somehow? Hurt your career? Hurt your street cred? Hurt your fucking Twitter twats? Like, what the fuck, dude? You owe it to the people who came before you to give them the credit they're due. And, like, this whole thing where, like, people are like, well, I'm not ashamed. I just don't talk about it because it's, like, a guilty pleasure. Everything should be a guilty pleasure. It shouldn't be, like, a shame pleasure. Like, that's, like, when, like, I don't know, you pay some chick in leather boots to run a vacuum and sodomize you and beat you with a stick. That's something you don't tell people about. Okay? But, like poems that you like poets that you like you could <laughs> guilty it's pleasurable everything you read should be fucking pleasurable like and that just the phrase guilty pleasure it should be like shamed like masturbating in a closet in the dark pleasure like i i don't get it i don't fucking understand why people are so fucking precious that they're afraid to tell people what they're fucking into and what inspires them. Here's another thing, dude. Here's something that drives me just up the fucking wall. And this seems to be the polite way of saying that you don't like something about Bukowski, okay? This is a comment I got from Garrett Carroll, who's an awesome fucking dude. Love Garrett. Um, and he's a poet, great poet. He's a cool fucking dude. But he says stuff like this. I found them two in the moment, speaking of Bukowski's poetry. I found them two in the moment. Almost like a drunken wastrel trying to throw his pen at the notebook. Like painting madness with words. First off, painting madness with words? Sign me the fuck up, dude. That sounds great. I would love to read something like that. But this whole thing where people, like, dude, all the poets you read are fucking drunks, okay? Like, just let's just fucking be okay with that. So whenever anyone throws the word drunk or alcoholic or anything like that into something when they're talking about Bukowski, it's like, and the sky is blue, water is wet, um... You know, like, what the fuck? Like, no shit. Fire's hot. Okay, what other fucking things do you know? Dogs bark. Got it. Like, tell me something new. Um, and there are two in the moment. Okay? Now, I really, really think, I really fucking think, 
when people say shit like this, they're saying it because they are trained fucking poets who went to fucking school, learned their fucking shit, and was told that poetry is difficult, that writing poetry is difficult, and writing poetry should take months, if not years. And revision, 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 revision. Okay? So, if you are trained in your head because you have been taught by some fucking old piece of shit motherfucker that this is the way poetry is supposed to go, anytime you see someone writing free and just letting shit flow, you're automatically going to go, oh, this, this, no, 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 no. This is, this is too, too in the moment, too free spirited. Can't have that. No. And I know Garrett's going to go, I'm not talking about free spirit. I know. I'm, I'm using your comment here to paint a larger picture. I do this all the time. So I'm not saying you are saying this exact same thing. But a drunken wastrel trying to throw his pen at the notebook. Well, if I'm honest, I'm going to assume that he has written more words than any poet you read. So maybe it wasn't exactly throwing his pen. Maybe his pen was actually on the page going to town. Poets that don't write as much desperately try to throw their pen at a notebook and hope that it hits. That's just one of those things I fucking get, dude. I just, like, people say shit like this to me all the time. But he also said at the end of his comment, it was funny, he's like, you could be damn sure that I walked away from his poetry thinking, dang, L.A. is dangerous and this guy needs to stop betting on horse races. <laughs> that cracked me up. I thought that was fucking funny. Let's see. what th There was another fucking... Con okay. Now, this is pretty much the majority of the other hate... Actually, no, because there's still the misogynistic shit. But this is the other um, side of hating what Bukowski does. So this is from a dude called Fifty Shades of Black. And um, this comment is really long. I will just read this last bit here. Wanting to be a bohemian can be cool in your 20s and early 30s. But after that, it's not cool. What's cool is to create art and actually doing the work. To me, he seems like the common narcissistic addict. That is a bum and a loser. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say to this, okay? I don't think, from what I've read of Bukowski, I don't think he ever claimed to be a bohemian. I don't think he ever, like, tried to, <laughs> like, him using that word even makes me want to fucking laugh a little bit. But earlier in the comment, he says, if it weren't for his writing talent, he would have been a simple bum at the pub. Oh, my God. I I could say some shit right here. I'm trying to be nice. Because I don't think this guy was trying to be fucking, like, mean about anything. Uh, I think he's a total narcissist. Why is he so special? Because he writes books? I do separate him from his work, but all you aspiring artists out there, if you want things done, then think like a professional. That is to wake up in the morning, do your work, then eat lunch, then work even more, then go home at, I guess, five o'clock and so on. Um, I don't, I don't know. Like this sounds very, like if you have read Bukowski, I can't remember what story it was. But there's this story where he is working in the post office and there's a dude next to him and the dude starts talking to him and he's like, you know, so are you a hippie? Like, why you got a beard? And he just starts asking him all these ridiculous questions. And then he starts talking about work and hard work and um, just a bunch of crap like that. And a lot of what this comment sounds like sounds like that story, which is kind of kind of interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that there. I don't want to get too much more in the weeds with this comment. Everybody has a fucking opinion. What I like about this comment that I just said I wasn't going back to 
at least he fucking says here that Bukowski had writing talent. So for that right there, I will fucking like applaud him because like usually you don't even get that from anybody, but you do get this. Like I have heard so many times that he's a fucking loser and that he's a bum and it just cracks me the fuck up. So what would it take for Bukowski to not be a loser and to not be a bum because like he bummed a lot and then he was able to hold his fucking post office job for 12 fucking years had his fucking apartment you know and then started making enough money with his poetry that he bought a fucking house in San Pedro that he paid off within a couple years and then bought a BMW with cash so like what makes him a bum and a loser? Because, like, he's fucking living the dream, dude. Like, so, it's just, it's, it's so funny, the things that people say. Like, there's no basis for any of it. I don't fucking know. I don't know why the fuck I care. It's just, like, when I hear people say stupid shit, it just makes me want to fucking lash out. As much as I hate to fucking say this. I can understand the formalists hating Bukowski because he does not write in form. And me tour. I, I get it. Okay? But I also think you're fucking idiots for thinking that that's the only way to do something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back and finish this episode. I'm fucking angry as fuck right now. So... I was thinking here for a bit, and I had a couple chiladas, four to be exact, homemade, um, because I'm out of vodka, so I can't have any Bloody Marys right now, but um, the chiladas were good as shit, because I am an amazing bartender. But what I wanted to talk about here was Alice Allen has a podcast called Poetry Says, which is a, a wonderful poetry podcast. It is very Australian-centric, and there are a lot of things on that show that I think if you are not from Australia, they will not hit the way they do for poets or poetry readers from Australia. And that's okay. That's not what we're talking about right now. That'll be a different topic for a different fucking day. But on one of the latest episodes, it's the newest episode of this recording, but um, by the time this comes out, there might be another episode out. But I think the episode was called Fury. But in the episode, she's complaining that there are not any, like, real rage poets. And sometimes... Like, rage is a feeling that one needs to work through. So it would be nice if there were some fucking rage poets out there. And I am here to tell you, Alice, that there is. And I would consider myself a fucking rage poet. My book, Mart, that whole fucking book is me ready to fucking kill people. I'm trying to think what other ones. There's probably at least one in every book. But um, with my newest book here, Last Chance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a couple things out of here for you. Um, and I'm just gonna read them because um, I don't think Alice likes getting emails from me anymore. I kind of rubbed her the wrong way. And I'm upset about that. I'm a little bummed out. Um, I think she took some of the things I said in an email as me being a little rough around the edges, which I am. But I meant her no harm or anything like that. Okay, let's try this one. <clears throat> this is called The Lottery. The guy at the gas station thought I was going to drive away without paying for my propane today. Who the fuck does he think he is? 
I've always been a good customer. I've overpaid for things countless times because they always overcharge me for shit. I don't bitch because it's the only shop within an hour drive. Who the fuck does he think he is? I've always been good. I'm there almost every day. Maybe I should pull a gun on him just once so he knows I'm not fucking around. It may be the wine talking, but I'm tired of people shitting on me. I'm an all right dude, goddammit. I've been nothing but super cool to these fucking people. Maybe I need to crack some fucking skulls to get some respect. A year of paying ridiculous prices daily, obviously, isn't enough. So I guess the final question is, which one of these fuckers do I pick? Now, to be fair, I am against guns. Um, and I don't like guns. But in that neck of the woods, um, every motherfucker is, like, carrying you know, because, you know, America. So I would rather smash someone's fucking head in with my hands or with a rock or a heavy stick. And I'll just read one more because I think this one really just sets the fucking tone. This is called I Know How to Kill. I know how to snap hinge joints. I know how to dislocate ball and socket joints. I know how many pounds of pressure it takes to break most bones. I know what angle to hit you at to make the brain stop communicating with other parts of your body. Why do I know these things? Because I dislike people for the most part. Most men are good sports if they think about getting in a fight. They just think about sparring. I've never been like that. I'm a bad sport. I think of what your blood will taste like when I bite into your flesh. I think of how the warm spray will feel against my inner cheeks once your skin first breaks. The look in your eyes when you realize we are playing two very different games. These are the things I think about when I'm forced to stand in line at the grocery store, the post office, the gas station, the bank, the doctor's office, the mechanic shop, the... Insert whatever you want after that. So... So, Alice, um, those were just a couple rage poems that um, you can sink your teeth into. Um, yeah, I, I think there's probably more than me poets out there who are just, like, they don't give a shit. And so they write for therapy. They write to get these things out. And I feel like a lot of poets, the majority of poets out there, bottle that shit up because they feel like that's not something that they should write about. Even though every fucking person has at least one moment somewhere along the line where they are about to fucking snap. Just snap. All right, everybody. This is the part where I take the B plug and sit on it. So my hair is a mess because I'm a little buzzed. So let's get to the knit and the grit. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a part here. Um, my newest chat book, Last Chance, is out now at my Etsy shop. Um, it is poems about last chance gas stations, if you know what that's like. Um, Blood Rag 4 out now pick it up while you can while they are still available um i can't find it right now but preview of a dangerous mind um short stories that is up on my etsy shop now as well um alpha hunter the fourth book in the zombie zero series is out now as is the rest of those books 
um, go over to Kindle Vela if you are into the Vela thing, and you can read Horrywood. There's three um, chapters of that up right now about uh, confessions of a low-budget horror filmmaker. Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, the book, will be out in November, so keep an eye out for that. And again, I can't stress this enough, if you want to get into the Anarchy Crew at a low, low price... Do it before November 1st or else you are fucked and I will then be fucking your wallet. So let's just be real here. So with that said, everybody, keep buying my books, type hard, and I will talk to you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.